director of one in ten. Director of programs. Director programs. There we go. Yes. So I hear that you used to go to uh, one in ten when you were younger. Well, I went to a program called one in ten actually in Tennessee. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I've been involved in the youth community since I was younger. He's from Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee. Tennessee. You're the only ten I see. Oh, <laughs> just get a little bit closer. Now, how was it? <laughs> uh, it was uh, a unique experience. I grew up on a farm, a family of ten. Uh, I'm in the middle. Ten. Yeah, there's ten of us total. We're not Mormon or Catholic, but uh, we're just <laughs> or Mexican. We're Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> we just didn't have a lot to do in the south. And um, I grew up on a farm. And um, when I was younger, my mom always said I was artsy. And artsy turned to being a big old homo. Um, so at 15, my parents sent me away to Camp Change in Memphis, wow. Tennessee. Okay. Yeah, to get that demon of homosexuality yeah. out of my. You didn't really have them. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and they, they, but what's so amazing? Mm -hmm. it's the first time I ever had sex. Um, yeah. So so the thing. was change. Yeah. So, okay. But the thing about Camp Change is Ooh. they send people within our denomination, uh, people that have been involved in gangs, people that have been involved in drugs. And then people that were gay. So I learned how to start a gay game to sell drugs. Wow, that's what I learned. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. That was what I was looking for. I actually asked to be sent back. <laughs> Such a good experience. I love it. So it worked. Did you know any other gay people besides? Um, well, I, I grew up in a very small school. Um, there were only 500 in our, in our entire high school. So from ninth grade to 12th grade, there were only 500 of us. Uh, I was the only out one. And there was this one young girl um, who I knew was a lesbian. She found me on Facebook recently. She's like, thank you, you helped me come out. And she came out when she was like 25. Um, so no, yeah, I was like the only, I was the homo in the town. Um, so the good thing I didn't do was I can't change. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got to meet other homos like myself. Yeah. What's going on with 1 in 10? 1 in 10, well, we've had an incredible year. Um, we have had a lot of change. We hired our first new executive director, which was incredible. Uh, we're hosting our first inaugural brunch on April the 24th, and we started um, with my florist. We'll, uh, we're doing a program, or not a program, an event called Dining with the Divas, which is a drag queen hosted Sunday brunch once a month. Uh, yeah, crazy. <laughs> uh, we've had a great year. We, uh, we hosted Outdoors Leadership Camp, our gay camp. Oh, yeah. um, and it's just been incredible. What it has grown so now, great. Uh, outdoors. Outdoors. What, what happened? Last year, with outdoors, someone donated. I heard that someone donated a check. That was a real check, or was that right? Oh wow, the trauma. Yeah, uh, yeah. Check donations yeah, wanna, yeah. happened not here. Uh, yes. So a a crazy woman uh, to get it. Oh, it's cash. Yeah, it's cash. Uh, to get attention, she had written several checks that night on behalf of someone she'd stolen them from uh -huh. to help support us and. Um, so yeah, so she wrote some bogus checks, and it was a lot of information was uh, misinformation was given about that because people said that it was drag queens or drag. They had nothing to do with it. They were honestly accepting a donation that they thought was valid. Uh, but what was so incredible is that Nikki Kidd, along with several other performers, actually came here to the Rock. I'm sorry, to our show. They did a fundraiser at the Rock and made up for all that money mm -hmm. uh, in one night. Two days. The Rock has been. The Rock is, it has been a great neighbor to us. They're very supportive and very helpful, and we use their water for car wash. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they've been a good neighbor. So, what is that? People like me who have never really been involved in the organizations, you know, just really kind of getting into the community, um, what can we do besides donations? Can we get in there and do something? or? Well, well this is the deal. A lot of people uh, see working with youth. Is very scary. You know, whoa, they're young people, they're gay, we can't work with them. No, totally, just be role models, mm -hmm. is, is what I ask. Uh, we're really, we really have a great volunteer staff, we have great programs, we have a lot of opportunities for young people. We, of course, always need donations, we always need water and snacks, those are always consistent every week of my life. But it's really being a role model. When you're at Pride, when you're at the bar, when you're online, mm -hmm. be role models, set examples uh, for these young people and uh, really empower them. Don't be afraid to have conversations with them about your life. I've ever seen Michael Action. Yeah. Uh, one in ten. How do you start off your uh, 
How do you start off? <laughs> so we start off the group going, holla! And the kids have to go, hey! <laughs> and a lot of them go, gay, whatever. Uh, so we do announcements, we do rules, and they get to come up with their own rules. Okay. So one of our rules is, one in ten is not a garden, so don't be a hoe. Uh, <laughs> save the drama for your mama. Okay. Sober up before you show up. Uh, and they get to come up with their own rules, and they, they really create an environment. And what I do with young people is I try to get them excited, but also realize that we're going to give information about HIV, about dating, about depression. We're also going to have fun. We have Project Run Gay, which is our uh, twice-year runway show that they get to do. Uh, we have Drag 101. And our philosophy of 1 in 10, we don't make you gay, but we will make you do drag. Um, we have a lot of fun. Uh, and the thing about 1 in 10 is, three, I, I've been with 1 in 10 over three years now. When I first started 1 in 10, we were white, middle-class gay boys. And we had about 20 of them. They were like, woe is me, it sucks because I have money and my parents accept me. Uh, but now we have about 250 to 300 kids per week. Uh, we're 40% Latino. Uh, we're a good even mix of male and female. And uh, we really empower them. We're not therapy. We're not woe is me. We're empowered. What are the age rights? 14 to 22 for 1 in 10. And then the Youth Empowerment Project, which is uh, a program that 1 in 10 recently took over actually last week, is 14 to 24. Website one ten dot the number one the letter in the number ten dot <laughs> Great, I'm going to be joining him doing something. Right. You bring snacks. You bring snacks. Talk to snacks. talk to the young females. Tell them they can have long hair. It's not required to shave right now. Yeah. You can be a fan. Yeah, this is the girliest I ever get. So. Me too. Okay. This is my lesbian wear. <laughs> You know what, the, uh, the one thing we get, the response from the volunteers is they feel they get just as much out of being in Williamson mm -hmm. as the youth do. Uh, because it gives an opportunity, most of us didn't have an opportunity like Williamson when we were young. So to be a part of that environment is really helpful. Yeah. And a lot of the youth that, uh, former youth, have come back and are now volunteers, which is great. It's great. And it's uh, Wednesdays in Tempe? No, no, no. We're Tuesdays in Tempe, Thursdays in Phoenix, and Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we run the drop in Center at 12th Street in Dow, which is open 3 to 8. Uh, we also do GED training and testing. We have a summer workforce training program. Um, we do camp, and we also do the Latino Cultural Fair. So how does the job program work with the economy? Dun, 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 dun. You know, we're really fortunate. Um, the economy, you know, has affected us somewhat, but we have an incredible community that comes out and supports us. And we've actually increased fundraising in the amount that people have given us. Uh, just every month we have people that donate at least like $400 a month, $100 a month, $50 a month, and that's been consistent and it's actually risen. I think that our community has seen that the economy is, you know, is suffering and they didn't want one in 10 to suffer, so they've increased that. Uh, unfortunately, we have, you know, there's some grants out there that have decreased or we've lost, but our community is really taking care of us and we're really fortunate in that aspect. I didn't know what a hairstyle was in right now. Oh, well, <laughs> she got red. It was two hours at the uh, hair salon yesterday and to get red, and um, then they didn't, she didn't have time to cut it, so I have to go back now to cut it. Oh. And right, we'll have you back then so you can show off the Oh, it's every month, and I have a tail now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. yeah there's, there's a different hairstyle. Every, every six weeks, yeah. a different color. Um, well, I'm going to create a change conference on Tuesday, so to learn how to be a better LGBT. I think a change will do you good, I'm sure. Okay. All right. All right. 1in10.org? www. The number one. The letter in. I don't know if that's the letter in. <laughs> I've decided that. Hey, you wives. 1in10.org. Well, thank, thank you. Well, thank yeah. you, guys. 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. All right.